Hello there, Graham here again. Today I'd like to talk about bailout selection. When we're talking about bailout, we're largely talking about the tanks we're going to strap to our side. I'm a GUE diver. It's almost like admitting you're an alcoholic. But of course, there's nothing bad about GUE. We have a specific equipment configuration, which means we're carrying quite a lot of gas on our back. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about the deco tanks or stages that you might clip off to your side. So let's have a look at a few worked examples. You can see what tanks I bring and what gases I choose to bring. And is there a team strategy that we can use for this kind of bailout scenarios? The picture you can see behind me is a somewhat comically called squid launcher. A bit of googling will find out some cartoon hits on this, but if you scratch a bit deeper you can find out the true use and purpose of this device. It really is called a squid launcher. Now onto those examples. So in this first slide we look at a classic entry level tech diving example. 45 meters. Here we choose 1845 or you probably actually want a bit more helium than 45 on a rebreather. But anyway 1845 and approximately half the depth is 20 meters and here we can use 50%. For this reason, for a single deco gas tech dive in the 40 to 50 meter range, 50% is the usual gas we choose. I often see people lugging around huge 11 liter or 80 cubic foot tanks for this kind of dive. But let's have a look at the numbers. For 30 minutes at 45 meters on 1845, it generates around 31 minutes of deco. If you've done a GUE Tech 1 class, you'll know about ratio deco, and you'll know this fits the example perfectly. 30 minutes of bottom time gives us approximately 30 minutes of deco. If we run the calculations for 30 minutes of decompression between 21 meters and the surface, we get 800 liters of gas. 800 is all we have to plan for on a CCR dive, since we're not planning contingencies of sharing, since if we've already bailed out, that's our contingency planning. For this particular dive. A full 5.6 or 40 cubic foot tank will contain around 11 or 1200 litres of gas. So that means for this dive, if I had the choice, I would take a 5.6 or 40 cubic foot with 50% inside it. People often ask, what about oxygen? So let's have a look at an oxygen example here. For me, oxygen's not the ideal gas to bring on this kind of dive because we have to ascend all the way from 45 meters to 6 meters to use our gas. I would say that oxygen is often overestimated as the most useful decompression gas. For me, it's the least useful because we have to ascend the furthest before we can actually access it. And from 6 meters, if your surface support or your boat crew can't get another tank down to you, you really should be looking at your support rather than changing the gases you're bringing for a particular dive. Nonetheless, if only oxygen's available, we could bring it for this dive and we see that we can decompress from it using a 40 cubic foot. The numbers are about 40 minutes of decompression in this case. So you can see the benefit of switching earlier to 50%. Because the decompression starts earlier, we actually end up with a more efficient or shorter decompression. About 40 minutes at 6 meters gives us 400 liters of gas used. 400 liters out of a 5.6 liter tank or 40 cubic foot is not very much at all. That's about a third of the full capacity. So we can think of about 70, 80 bar. So as I said, in an ideal world, I wouldn't choose this gas for a 45 meter dive, but we could decompress from it if necessary. And we could do the dive if this was the only gas available to us. Often at 45 to 50 meters, you'll see heroes bringing two decompression gases. Is that really necessary? Well, look at a worked example here. We can see that if we do bring two deco gases, and we did have to bail out, we'd have the shortest decompression compared to individually 50% or O2. That makes sense, of course. But 25 versus 31 or even 39, can I be bothered to carry that extra cylinder for that minimal benefit? Probably not for a 30 minute dive. However, there's more than one reason why we might want to bring oxygen on a rebreather dive. Because if the three liter supply bottle of your oxygen breaks or you've got a blockage that means you can't get oxygen from that tank into your rebreather. It's quite nice to be able to plug to offboard gas and then the dive on closed circuit. Only you can decide if that's a good idea to bring oxygen on the dive in hand. But somehow in team diving it could be a good idea that one of the team actually brings oxygen. That way if somebody's oxygen supply is interrupted 
we can move the oxygen around within the team and plug in off-board gas and still make an efficient closed circuit exit. So the question becomes, should someone carry 50 and 100, or would it be okay in a team diving environment for one teammate to have oxygen and one teammate to have 50%? Well, actually, this is the way that I'd probably choose to do this dive. It's not really team bailout per se, because every diver is carrying enough gas to get back to the surface, but everybody's just not carrying quite the same gas. So just to sum up, I'm not suggesting that we share the bailout amongst the team, but what I am saying is perhaps it's okay for different teammates to have different gases. That way, if someone bails out and we're together as a team, we can make full use of all the gas available within the team. However, if we get separated and have to bail out, we're still carrying enough gas for us individually to get back to the surface. So that seems like a pretty smart idea. Now let's push this a bit. Let's go a bit deeper and build up some more decompression and see how these ideas impact our bailout deco gas selection. Okay, so we've pushed the depth a bit. More similar to where this shot was taken at 84 meters in Marlin Head. So 30 minutes at 81 meters. I don't think anybody would suggest this is wise to do with a single decompression gas. So let's pick two, oxygen and 50%. And we can see that with this 168 minutes of decompression, it would mean that we need 1800 liters of 50% and 1500 liters of oxygen. We could not carry 1800 liters of gas in any tank smaller than 11 or an 80 cubic feet. So that makes the selection easy for the 50% in this case. And then the oxygen, 1500 liters. In actual fact, a full 40 or 5.5, 5.6 liter tank would give us 1200 liters of gas more or less. So we can't actually do this with a 40 or a 5.6. So we go up a size to a 7 litre. 7 litre gives us about 1,400 litres of gas. So more or less we can achieve this with a 7 litre. So it means in order to do a 2 decompression gas bailout ascent from 30 minutes at 80 metres, we'd actually need to carry an 80 cubic foot and a 7 litre for 50 and oxygen respectively. But is this wise? Is it wise to ascend from 80 metres all the way to 21 metres? That would take quite some gas. So perhaps it'd be wise to explore three decompression gases in this case, see whether we can reduce the decompression, and also by adding a third decompression gas, we can reduce the pressure on our bottom gas. Pressure in this case, meaning how much gas we're using to get up to our switch step. So GUE has standard decompression gases. The next deepest decompression gas after 50% or 21 meter bottle would be the 36 meter bottle, which is more or less 35, 25. Although in rebreather applications, we're probably gonna up the helium content of both the 50% and the 36 meter bottle. Now we're ascending to 36 meters. That's removed the stress on the bottom gas because now we're only ascending 40 meters, not 60 meters to get to our first switch. We can see that there's been a dramatic effect on the amount of decompression as well. We've gone from 168 minutes of decompression to 126. That is definitely worth carrying that third deco gas. Also, we can see that the way the gas usage is split out, it means that we can reduce the size of the 50% bottle. Between 36 and 21, we need 800 litres of gas. 800 litres of gas will easily fit in a 40 cubic foot or 5.6 litre cylinder. So that's a little bottle, which will give us a great impact on the amount of decompression. Fantastic, seems pretty cool, right? Woo, the next gas that's up is our 50%. And here we need 1500 litres of gas. 1500, more or less, we can fit inside that seven litre bottle. And then we move up to oxygen. Now the oxygen time's reduced because of the deeper decompression that we've done, and we've reduced to 1200 litres. So 1200 litres is more or less the capacity of the 40 or 5.5 litre cylinder. So instead of hauling around an 80 cubic foot and a 40 cubic foot, we can now do this dive with two 40 cubic feet tanks and one seven litre. So that's two 5.6s and one seven litre tank. 
and we're not carrying all our eggs in one basket or two baskets, so to speak. So we split the decompression over three cylinders. And this allows us to carry three smaller cylinders instead of one big one and one large one. So that's pretty cool. So let's have a look if we bring 57 meters. Can the 57 meter bottle be more useful in this case than the 36? So by substituting a 57 meter bottle for the 36, we can see that we've reduced the decompression by a few more minutes down to two hours. This is because we're switching to a decompression gas earlier and therefore we're starting decompression earlier and it means it's a little bit more efficient, I mean quicker actually in this sense. However, there's been an impact on the gas usage. So instead of being 800 litres of our third deco gas, 36 metres, we now need 1800 litres of our 57 metre bottle. 1800 litres we can't fit in a 5.5 or 40 cubic foot or a 7 litre tank, so therefore we must bring an 80 or 11 litre. So we can see the pressure on the 21 metre bottle or 50% bottle has been reduced a little bit, and we now need 1400 litres. Moving up to the oxygen, it's more or less the same as when we carried the 36 meter bottle, and that is 1200 litres needed, so we can fit that in a five and a half. So if we choose a 57 meter bottle, now we actually need an 11 or an 80 cubic foot of 2135, we need a 7 of 50%, and we need a 5.5 or 40 cubic foot of oxygen. So what are the pros and cons of this choice? Well, we start our decompression earlier, so we need less bottom gas because we're not ascending as far to our first decompression switch. We've made the decompression a little bit more efficient and it's six minutes shorter. But we now have to carry an 11 litre or 80 cubic foot tank over the 40 cubic foot that we brought with the 36 metre bottle. If you're lucky enough to have lots of tanks, you could choose which tanks you want to bring for a specific dive. Or, if you've only got the choice of a few tanks, then you have to work your dive around the tanks that are available to you. So talking of working the dive to the tanks we've got available to us, we can actually choose to switch to 2135 at a slightly shallower depth. And if we've only got a 5.6 litre or 40 cubic foot bottle available for our third deco gas, and it's filled with 2135, we could choose what depth to switch to so that we've got enough pressure to make the decompression. And here we can actually adjust from 57 meter for our switch up to 45 meter. And then because we're switching shallower and using less gas, and obviously because we're using less gas, we can bring the smaller bottle. So this could be something to bear in mind. So what are the pros and cons of this solution? Well, obviously you've put more pressure back on your back gas because you're needing to ascend further up to the point that you make that switch but you're switching deeper than 36 meters, and therefore your decompression is starting a bit earlier. But it actually only saves us one minute of decompression versus switching at 36 meters. So somehow we need to decide what's the sensible solution here. And like I said, that will depend on the dive in hand, the team, and what gases and bottles you have available to you. So what about that team bailout approach? Well, maybe not a team bailout approach, maybe carrying the four bottles. Is it worth carrying 57, 36, 21 and 6 meter for this 30 minutes at 80 meters? Let's have a look at the numbers. Alrighty, so now we're carrying four bottles. We make our first switch at 57 meters. 57 meters to 36 requires 900 liters of gas. So we can do that with a 40 cubic foot. Our next gas switch is 36 meters. And 36 to 21, we need 700 litres of gas. The last deco gas in this case would be oxygen. And for oxygen, we need 1100 litres. 1100 litres, again, would fit in a 40 cubic foot. So if you've got four 40s available and you're willing to carry those four deco gases and you're willing to do all the rotations, this will obviously give us our most efficient ascent. And we've saved. 15, 16 minutes of decompression by carrying that fourth deco gas. So you can balance, is it worth bringing that fourth deco gas with the double rotation instead of a single rotation needed in order to move the bottles around to use them on a bailout ascent? And have you got four 40 cubic foot tanks available to allow you to make this dive? Personally, I don't think I could be bothered with carrying four deco gases just to save 10, 15 minutes of decompression. 
and the double rotation, particularly in midwater, adds risk of dropping bottles. And if we drop bottles when we're actually breathing them open circuit, that can be a disaster. There are many things for us to consider for this dive in hand, which will cause us to make different decisions. We could plan the dive based on what gas we've got, or we could plan an optimum decompression and then get the gas that we need. Decisions, decisions again. So the last thing we could potentially do for this dive in a team of two or three is vary who is carrying what. I think it makes sense for everybody to carry 50 and 100. Since 50 is your most useful decal gas, and there's plenty of benefits for bringing oxygen on a rebreather dive. We can see that adding the third deco gas can shave nearly an hour of decompression in this case, so it's well worth bringing the third deco gas. But we could have one diver carrying the 57 meter bottle and another diver carrying the 36 meter bottle. So if we're together, I could take the 57 off my teammate, then use my own 36, then use my 50 and my 100 and get back to the surface with this super efficient ascent. If my teammate bails out, he would use his 57 from 57 meters and then at 36, he would use my 36 meter bottle and then he would use his 50 and his 100. In the unfortunate case that we have to bail out and we're apart from each other, we're actually carrying enough gas to make somehow an efficient ascent. So in this case, probably what I would choose to do is for one teammate to carry a 57 meter bottle, one teammate to carry a 36 meter bottle, and all of us to carry 50 and 100. So the person carrying the 36 meter bottle will need a bit more back gas because they need to ascend to 36 meters before they're able to switch. And the person carrying the 57 meter bottle, if it's not an 80 cubic foot and they bail out alone, will need to bear in mind that they probably don't have enough in that small deco bottle. So they better switch at something like 45 meters and not 57, so that they've got enough gas to do the ascent with the gas that they're carrying. Thinking divers make smart decisions. And it's best to talk this out amongst your team before you actually get in the water and not wait till you're at the sharp edge of a two hour bailout ascent to be making decisions. All good things must come to an end. And here we end on the bow of the Hearst Castle. Given that it's punching through the waves for its lifetime, the bow is often reinforced. And that's why we can often find them when many other parts of the ship have collapsed. I hope you've enjoyed this dive and got a little bit of an insight into the things that I consider before I plan a dive on my CCR. If you like this video, please consider woo, smashing that like button, share it with your friends and leave some comments of any questions you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs>